I don't know who this movie is for. On the one hand, it appeals to Christians who like stories of martyrdom and Christian oppression, but on the other hand, it appeals to people like us, uh, people who like movies with Amazonians killing African pygmies and flower-draped naked women being fed to alligators and uh, smoky-eyed hotties taking baths in donkey milk. <laughs> yeah, donkey milk. This movie is for us. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at Cecil B. DeMille's The Sign of the Cross from 1932. Cecil B. DeMille made a number of Christian movies, the Ten Commandments probably being the most well-known, but The Sign of the Cross is by far the most debauched, the kind of movie that could only be made in pre-code times. Or, you know, nowadays times. So, uh, let's check it out. We open with Emperor Nero playing a liar while Rome burns. He's played by Charles Lawton, director of one of my favorite films from the 1950s, The Night of the Hunter. Here, he plays Nero rather flamboyantly, and I wonder if this performance inspired Hedonism Bot. Jambi, the chocolate icing. Oh, oh my, yes. <laughs> my head is splitting. The wine last night, the music. A delicious debauchery. Anyway, one of his soldiers informs him that by refusing to do anything to quell the fires, people might start to think that he's the one who started them, and that could lead to some dangerous unrest. So, Nero suggests they blame the Christians. Later, a mob is about to apprehend a few Christians when Marcus, the prefect of Rome, intercedes. Marcus is played by Frederick March. Uh, we last saw him on this channel as Dr. Jekyll. And Mr. Hyde. Here, he's quite taken with a rather lovely Christian girl named Mercia, which is why he's so lenient with the Christians the mob wants to apprehend and lets them go. But his leniency does cause him some political troubles, but he doesn't seem to care too much because he's got it bad for that Christian girl. And I grew up next to an all-girls Catholic high school, so I get it. Mercia's brother is arrested, and under torture, he reveals the location of the next Christian meeting. And the Romans show up, guns blazing. Well, this is uh, before uh, guns existed, so they, they show up, bows twanging. Same difference, uh, lots of dead Christians. Uh, Marcus tries to get there in time, but he has an accident, and then the uh, Empress uh, holds him up, so he doesn't make it. Uh, but Marcus does manage to get Mercia out of prison and brings her to be a kind of a prisoner in his own house. He tries to convince her to dump her silly religious beliefs and instead live with him in a life of opulence and pleasure. But she's not into that. I mean, she's a Christian, and Christians think that everything fun and human is sinful. So she's not into that. Christians are weird. Marcus, of course, doesn't understand this, and he thinks instead that maybe she's just a lesbian, so he asks one of the partygoers to try to uh, convince her to have a good time at the party. Couldn't you warm her into life? No. No, I tried, but I couldn't. <laughs> See what you can do, Aunt Carrie. Try one of your songs. <laughs> that doesn't work either, because, like I said, Christians are kind of weird. Outside, the other Christians are being led to the Colosseum, where they will be fed to lions as part of a big gladiator event. What will happen to Mercia? What will happen to Marcus? Eh, that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. There are a lot of shocking and therefore highly entertaining moments in this film. I mean, I couldn't believe that donkey milk bath scene. I mean, it's just really surprising that something like this was in a major studio release. Take off your clothes. Get in here and tell me all about it. Whew! <laughs> Getting me all Twitter pated. Twitter pated? Uh, beyond that great scene, uh, the last 30 minutes or so of this film are amazing. Everything that happens in that Colosseum is just nuts, from the dwarf fighting, to the elephant crushing heads, to the nearly nude flower women being fed to animals. It's crazy and awesome. 
Uh, the film is also filmed very well. I mean, the sets look great, the costumes look even better. You can tell they didn't have Hollywood epic money here, but uh, what money they did have, they put to great use. Uh, finally, I really like Charles Lawton's performance of Nero. Aside from the donkey milk empress, he is by far the best character in this, and every time he's on the screen, it's great. But despite Nero and that great Colosseum sequence, and the fact that Romans don't wear bras, uh, this movie is not perfect. Like the many guests at Marcus's orgy party, it has some shortcomings. Uh, this film is too long, and for the most part, pretty slow. I guess mostly because I just didn't buy into the drama here. I didn't buy Marcus's story. Why is he so enraptured by Mercia? It didn't really feel like love to me. It seems more lustful, and she was obviously not interested in that, so when he doesn't stop his advances and keeps escalating, the whole thing just feels kind of off. And since it seems kind of lustful, and since that Empress was sort of into that with Marcus, I just don't get it. Stop being a weirdo, Marcus, and get in that donkey milk and play around with those milked up milky milkers. I mean, use your head and your hands. And on a personal note, I just don't understand religious people very well. I mean, I have some rather strong beliefs and principles, uh, so I understand that part. Uh, what I don't understand is why they wouldn't be willing to uh, say the opposite just to save their lives. That doesn't make any sense to me. They're just words. I mean, if someone held a gun to my head, I'd say whatever they wanted. Oh yeah, capitalism is great. I love the free market and I'm really into the fact that business owners can keep all of the wealth that the workers produce. And I'm really thankful we've got pigs. I mean, uh, we've got cops that protect these interests. Can I go vote for a representative now? I would love to participate in this totally just system of democracy that we have. <laughs> yeah, see, it's easy. If all it takes to save your life is to say some stuff you don't believe, then say that stuff. Uh, not being willing to say that stuff suggests to me some sort of mental disorder. So I guess what I'm saying is it's hard for me to buy into this story because I think Christians are retired. <laughs>